So, what's up my peeps? Matrix Native here. And in today's video, I was looking everywhere for the comments. Today's build has been requested several times. I've looked on the Facebook, the Twitter, the Twitch, uh, YouTube. I cannot find the comments. So, I decided to put some comments from other hitters up today on the channel. With that being said, thanks you to everyone that has been supporting my non-builds creations. You know, my GTA 5, my PUBG. Let me tell you, if you play PUBG, go ahead and put your Xbox One Gamer tag in the comments and we need to hook up. Because I like that military game, even though it's not said military game, I'm loving it. You know, you get smoked, it's no one else's fault but your damn own and then when you play squads you get with some other hitters man it's a legit strategic game i would say the playability is up there quite above the wildlands to be honest so if you hadn't tried it you might want to check that game out huh? just remember also that it's that time of year again right i'm busy outside fucking about busy with the homestead with the animals so hey i'll make a promise to you i'll at least try to get one build out a week this summer Huh. And hopefully some other content. I want to thank everybody that comments, everybody that supports my channel. We don't got to worry about today's build getting struck because guess what? I'm not even going to monetize it. Oof off, YouTube. Huh? So operators, on your feet, I give you those operators we refer to as SWIC. Enjoy the video. Let's get on with some history. So the Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman commonly referred to as SWCC, pronounced SWIC, common spelling, SWI, Charlie Kilo, is a United States Naval Special Warfare Command Team that operates and maintains an inventory of small craft used to conduct special operations missions, particularly those of the U.S. Navy SEALs. Individually, SEALs and SWIC go through the separate specialized training programs that emphasize special operations in the maritime environment. SWIC are trained extensively in craft and weapons tactics, techniques, and procedures, focusing on clandestine infiltration and exfiltration of SEALs and other spec op forces. SWIC provide dedicated rapid mobility in shallow water areas where large ships just cannot operate. Their capabilities include direct action through coastline or rivers such as strikes, captures, and ship takedowns by visit, board, you know, search and seizure. Basically, the Coast Guard does a lot of this in maritime, huh? But when it comes down to a combative situation, swicker your boys. They also do missions as special reconnaissance, coastal patrol, and interdiction of suspect ships and surface craft. Again, that's more in a combat environment. They also do many missions alongside SEALs, providing security detail and evacuations. They must be physically fit, highly motivated, combat focused, and responsive in high stress situations. Let's track on what I just said. They must be physically fit, highly motivated, combat focused, and responsive in high stress situations. Okay, so if you want to be a SWIC, if you want to be SF, if you want to be a SEAL, if you want to be a Ranger, huh? We all must be physically fit, highly motivated, combat focused, and responsive in high stress situations, huh? I'm not taking anything away from these hitters, but what I am saying that is if you want to be under the umbrella then we all must be that huh that's all i'm trying to say so let's think about like where their history began where did these hitters specifically begin special boat teams can trace their history back to world war ii motor torpedo boat squadron three actually rescued general douglas MacArthur and later filipino president manuel l quezon from the Philippines. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be absolute honest with you. Come on man. They rescued General Douglas MacArthur. I mean rescued him. And then later as stated. President Manuel El Corazon from the Philippines. I mean come on. That's pretty fucking BA if you ask me. Moving on. 
PT boats subsequently participated in most of the campaigns in the Southwest Pacific by conducting and supporting joint combined reconnaissance, blockade, sabotage, and raiding missions, as well as attacking Japanese shore facilities, shipping, and combatants. PT boats were used in the European theater beginning in April 1944 to support the Office of the Strategic Services in the insurgents of espionage and French resistance personnel and for amphibious landing deception. I love that word. When you talk special operations, I love whenever that word deception is involved. The development of a robust riverine warfare capability during the Vietnam War produced the forerunner of the modern special warfare combatant crewman, a SWIC. In 1966, River Patrol Force Task Force 116 operated River Patrol boats, PBR basically, or River Patrol boats, conducting counterinsurgery operations in the Mekong Delta region of Vietnam. A SEAL platoon was assigned to each of the five river squadrons inserted and extracted from their patrol areas by PBRs, PBRs, River Patrol Boats. In July 1968, Light SEAL Support Craft, LSSC, began replacing the PBRs as the primary support craft. So, SWIC detachments have participated in nearly every major conflict since then, particularly in the Persian Gulf Theater during the 87 to 88 period of conflict and the 1991 Year of Our Lord Gulf War to more recent War on Tangoism. Now, a lot of people don't know this, and I'm going to throw this out. In August of 96, while attached to the USS sides during counter drug operations in Colombia, SBS 1, basically Special Boat Squadron Run, came under attack in the Antigua Valley region by members of the FARC, and that would be the Colombia's revolutionary movement. While conducting field operations, six SBS-1 members held off a force of approximately 150 rebels. The battle lasted for three days and nights. A member of the SBS-1 found themselves surrounded and cut off from each other on several occasions. Short of ammunition and water, SBS-1 held on until first light on day three, regrouped and counterattacked punching a hole in the FARC defense line and linking up with the Colombian special forces sent to assist him. Basically, that is what SWIC is all about. Basically, they punched FARC in the nose and said, you want some more? Fuck you! An estimated 43 FARC rebels were killed during the battle and four were captured with only one team member being wounded. Members of the team were cited for their heroism and bravery, and if that doesn't make my young hitters out there think, hmm, maybe Swick, maybe I'll go Swick. And that, my friends, is so freaking hood to me. That's one of those ones I want to go out now and double time like five miles down the fucking road. Let's go, Swick. Okay, Whew. all right. Let's talk a little something about SOCR. Let's talk about the Special Operations Craft Dash Riverine going back to the NOM days and my biggest freaking salute ever to my hitters from the Vietnam era during my generation of being a fucking pipe swinger. I looked up to the Vietnam vets a lot like I'm sure the the military today does huh to say somalia vets to the veterans from afghanistan from iraq right the vietnam hitters were the ones that we looked up to and gathered intel until our first movement to contact to it. So let's get back with it. The Special Operations Craft, also Riverine Craft, perform short range insurgents and extractions of Special Operations Forces in river and near shore environments. The SOCR is designed that the boat, including its tractor and trailer, fits aboard a C 130. C 130 rolling down the all right, our larger aircraft. Special boat teams, aka SBTs, perform an insurgent extraction delivery system called MEETS. MEETS basically allows an Army MH47 helicopter to carry a SOC R rigged 
to the underbelly of the helicopter with slings. The combatant craft crewman, Swick, use a rope to get from the helicopter into the craft for insurgents, and a ladder drop down from the helicopter to get off the Sakar craft when extracted. It replaced the patrol boat river and the many armored troop carrier so what we're saying these freaking hitters are gonna go ahead and fast rope down to the sock car that my friends is pretty fucking hua each craft is manned by a crew of four special warfare combatant craft crewmen swick crew members and can carry eight personnel the sock car speed and tight turn radius are facilitated by the hull design the slope of the SOCR's B-shaped belly essentially allows the boat to skate along the surface with relatively little drag on the hull. Thanks to the water jet propulsion, there is no hanging rudder or prop blades to snag on submerged roots or rocks. The Sakar's five weapon mounts provide a 360 degree field of fire. The aft mount 50 cal covers the boat crew as they leave shore after an extraction. Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish up the talk on their slick. Basically, the SOC R Special Operations Craft Riverine. Basically, built by the United States Marine Incorporated, not the United States Marine Corps. The United States Marine Incorporated. Basically, your operators will be SWIFT. It's a riverboat. Displacement is about 16,200 pounds empty, about 20,800 pounds on the max loadout. The speed we can get up to about 40 knots, which would be about 74 kilometers or 46 miles per hour. The range basically 125 nautical miles, that'd be 144 miles or 232 kilometers. And then capacity, 700 pounds of cargo, can carry troops, eight SEALs, or variants of those kind of fucking hitters. Crew itself, four crewmen, one one helmsman, three gunners, forward-looking infrared, basically your FLIR, uh, GPS navigation, IFF, identification friend or foe gear, and basically it's got all the, the whistles. The armor, ballistic protection up to 7.62 or 30 mic mic ball for the engines, helmsman and gunner, and then let's get down to it. The armament, the armament, get this. You're going to have two GAU-17 miniguns, one M2HB-50 cal. Now, <laughs> the mod deuce is bad, but the miniguns, I don't know. I, I'd have to throw that up in the air. Then, basically, it carries two uh, 240B 7.62 light machine guns. We all know about the M240. Uh, 240 Mike Mike MK-19 grenade launchers. Let me tell you, some of the first questions I get from my young hitters is, what does it take to win a firefight? And I'm going to tell you, this right here is what it takes to win a firefight. Peace through superior firepower. So, with that being said, I know a lot of my young hitters out there like, Damn, Matrix, I wanted to be a Ranger. I wanted to be SF. But now, I don't know. I think I want to be a Swick. How? How do I become a Swick? Your lucky day, as usual. Here's the rundown on that. Okay, just like Rasp, Rip, Q-School... Freaking buds, this is how you got to do it. You got to go with that screening test first. Just to see if your dick's long enough to even go into class to start this training. Huh. So, basically, you got to swim 500 yards in under 13 minutes. Side or breaststroke. Then, you will rest 10 minutes. And then, you will do 50 push-ups within 2 minutes. Rest 2 minutes. 50 sit-ups within 2 minutes. Rest 2 minutes. 6 pull-ups. Not chin-ups, pull-ups within 2 minutes. Rest 10 minutes, 1.5 mile run under 12 minutes. That's all this is easy, cheesy, lemon squeezy if you ask me. My biggest thing, be prepared, young bucks. You can't go into something and just hope you're going to get trained up there. You got to go in ready to bust balls, if you know what I'm saying. Then pass a basic underwater demolition seal physical fitness screening test in boot camp to qualify. So basically, the pipeline, once you get done with the screening, basically meets specific eyesight requirements. 2040 best eye, 2070 worst eye, correctable to 2025. 
got to be correctable to 2025 with no color blindness. I repeat again, if you're colorblind, good luck in really getting into to any unit. But basically, especially when you're talking the high-speed units such as SWIC. Meet the minimum. Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. Basically, your abs ab, your score. The AR and your VE should equal 103. With a Mike Charlie equaling 51. Be 30 years old or younger. Minimum would be 17. Initial SWIC training consists of the following. Eight-week Naval Special Warfare Prep School, Great Lakes, Illinois. Three weeks indoctrination course at Naval Amphibious Base, Coronado, California. Eight weeks basic crewman training at the Naval Special Warfare Center, Coronado. 21 weeks SWIC crewman qualification training at Naval Amphibious Base, Coronado. Okay, so if you got what it takes... And you're not real sure what all this ASVAB stuff's about, contact a recruiter. If you feel like they're bullshitting you around, leave a comment. And I'm sure that myself or some other Tier 1 operator or maybe a recruiter can actually give you specific logistics on becoming a SWIC. Again, active. April 16th, 1987 to the present. United States of America, United States Navy. That's right. Navy have very high speed jobs. Basically, Maritime Special Operations Force operate, maintain inventory of state of the art, high performance boats used in conjunction with SEALs and other special operations missions. Basically, their size about 755 active, 50 reserve, part of U.S. Special Operations Command. Hey, little safe count. And U.S. Naval Special Warfare Command. Their nickname, the Boat Guys. Motto, on time, on target, never freaking quit. So let's go. Smoke them if you got them. No joking allowed. Do some goddamn push-ups, pull-ups, and get where you can pass a screening, you freaking cupcake. Now, let's head the fuck down range. So my boat crew's ready. Uh huh. Boat crew is definitely ready. So what you're gonna do is hit back or select, and then double tap over to loadout, and then hit Y edit appearance. Now, instead of going through every operator I have here, every SWIC operator I have here, what I'm going to do is just sort of show you guys some of the stuff I came up with for my fellow SWIC boat operators and we'll go from there. However, this is the build I'm going with today. Again, sweet ass medic patch. Huh? So we're going to go ahead running in the head. Facial hair, of course, none because I have it on good saying that the SWIC operators, you know, they got to keep it clean shaven as well huh hair today we're going with shave just because why wouldn't we huh you're in the water always you don't need that even a well not that a high and tight really doesn't uh, or a ranger cut does not dry really quickly so uh yeah we're just gonna keep it shaved today huh hair color brown facial detail of course for me the burn the body details today the facial paint now you guys saw the history that I put out and I just feel like this fits it we're gonna go with the Pathfinder as well as the BDU one of my favorite camos ever so tonight we're going with Swick and like uh, like my boy acoustic just said again okay my bad Ben my bad for saying acoustic right because we all know it's Autistic Gamer. And again, <clears throat> just look in the comments and find his channel. I'm not sure if he's up to 100 yet or not. But who gives a fuck, huh? Uh, we're going to get him there eventually. And he does a lot of streaming himself. But let's get back to it, okay? I'm glad to have you aboard, Ben. A.K.A. Acoustic Autistic Gamer. Let's fucking go. Too bad about your, uh, your old Florida Panthers this year, huh? So, here we go. Hope you're all right. All right. So, facial paint, as stated, we're going to go with Pathfinder because, again, with the history, this just fits it. Again, as stated, the, uh, the whole BDU, that's what we're going with tonight. 
the woodland camo, if you will. I feel like it's one of the best, if not the best, especially when they came out with ripstop. Side note, uh, when they came out with the ripstop material, like clothing material, it was just wicked tough. Like we went from these, like, uh, I don't know, does anybody know like what dockers are or whatever? Okay, so basically the first gen of the BDU actually came out in in like this khaki, hard khaki docker material where it couldn't breathe. And then they came out with the rip stop. And of course, right, of course, the Rangers got them first before, say, company line companies so, uh, or, or line units, shall I say. So go ahead and equip that in the Pathfinder. Let's go ahead and track here. Right arm, Santa Maria, left arm, of course. And as always, mi familia. All right, clothing basically our uniform today okay tops we're going with commando and you're going to go ahead and throw that in the 2334 for today's swick build huh 2334 we're going to be hitting it with the commando we'll just go ahead and pretend this is rip stop material 2334 vest now today i'm going with the iba and I ain't hating you if you want to go with a heavy IBA, but just make sure you go ahead and equip it in the Woodland uh, BDU, because huh? that is the fit we're going with today. And again, as a aft gunner or uh, a gunner on on top of the freaking special ops boat, we're going to go ahead and and make this. I mean, if you're a gunner, you want as much equipment as, as you need, right? As much as armor as you want. So I'm not hating you if you go with a heavy IBA, huh? Not hating you at all. But for today's build, I'm going to go ahead and keep it in the IBA. Now, the heavy IBA, again, I think it's pretty hood. Huh? Make sure, again, that you put it in the BDU Woodland. But point of fact is, that medic patch will stay on no matter what, what camo you put it in. Uh, the medic patch you've got because of our primary and our secondary as with gunners, huh? So... Go ahead today, put it in the IBA, and go ahead and equip that in the 2324. Let's go. Somebody just cracked me up. They just sent me a text. Anyways, pants going with the cargo B today as the SWIC operator goes. And we're going to be putting that in the 2334. <laughs> but where? We're going to keep it simple. We're going with the combat boots. Combat boots. Oh, yeah. Put that in the i think we put that in the black actually so go ahead combat boots in the black ghillie suits of course none accessorize accessories so yeah i just had a spit sorry guys so anyway today finally i will be able to use my ballistic goggles again because i all the research i've done i have not yet seen a swick operator that doesn't wear some form of goggles huh and why wouldn't we, right? I mean, water hits your, you know, you just wipe them off. A lot of them have, I don't know if anybody's use or, or is familiar with the BMX or MX goggles that, you know, you have shields that you can just rip off, you know, when you get mud and stuff. Well, you know, they have that for operators as well in the armed services. So we're going to go ahead and throw those in the Echo Sierra Sierra ballistic goggles and we're going to be putting those in. The one seven black. Huh? I swear, today we're going with none. And even though I hate, I really do hate Wildlands for not letting us equip a t-shirt under our BDU. And as you can see it there, I don't know if you see it in the stream or whatever, but if you see it there, this is definitely ripstop material. It's sort of, if you look at my upper left shoulder or right as you're looking, uh, my upper left shoulder, you see like the little things that look like map grids. Okay, that you know that you are actually wearing the ripstop material. Like I said, at first, when I when I initially joined, we were in the BDU Woodland, but there wasn't no ripstop, right? The fast, fast, uh, high-speed units got the ripstop to check them out, and trust me, they worked. I was one of the first to, to actually get to wear the ripstop. And, you know, just staying with the swicks, man, nothing else really, really hits it. You're not going to be wearing a whole lot of shmigs or anything like that because of the fact that at any time, 
a Chinook could come and hook your boat up and you're out. Huh? So again, staying with a lot of things I preach in aviation, you're not going to wear anything that could fly up in the air. Huh? Maybe once you're on boots on ground, you can go ahead and hit the Chamog, pull out of your rucksack, Alice pack, backpack. But for this build today, we're going with no face wear at all. Don't want to hear it. We're not having it. Huh. Headwear. Now, for all you operators out there, for a build that I would go ahead and, I don't know, sanction, I guess you would say, or however you want to call it, this is the build to do it. I feel like it fits this build. Put it in your BDU, and really, now I see why the width of the, the ear hole was so wide, and that's so they could fit their their freaking uh headsets under it right and that actually looks pretty sweet and i might and i hate to say this but i might actually equip this ach if i had it open because to me it looks pretty freaking hood i mean i can't believe i'm saying it myself i don't know if they've worked on the on the uh graphics or whatever of this but this looks sick so if you have the ach i have no problem with you falling in if we're doing swick operations i have no problem with you falling in with this ach okay we're gonna let it slide this build however if you don't a couple other things you could do right now obviously uh where's it at where's that okay you could even use this bad boy the damn chopper helmet. That's right. Because, you know, let's face it. If you're the driver of the vehicle, uh, you know, the pilot helmet just might suit you, huh? Just make sure that you put that in the woodland as well. I actually like it better in the OD green. However, I'm not going with either one of those today. As stated, we're going to go with basically... The CHC. I think it's a good fit. I like how everything works on it. I like how it really pronunciates. Pronunciates? I said pronunciates. Haha. <laughs> Here's a hillbilly word for you. I like how it pronunciates the 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 actual headgear that we have on today. So do me a favor. I gave you two choices, but really, it's either gonna be the ACH or the carbon cut. Huh? And go ahead and put that. In the Bentectiles or the Tentectiles. <laughs> Put it in the woodland, my peeps. All right, let's go. Getting on down with it. Headset. We're not going to bother with CB or the earpiece. We're going with headset A because it's a beefy ass headset. And you're going to put that in the Uno Seis, Negro. Black. Okay? For all you people that think I'm racist out there, you're so fucking full of shit. So put that in the Uno Seis, Black. <laughs> Handwear. Now, here's another option for you, okay? Now, working around, just like if you were in aviation, huh? you're going to be working around things that blow up, things that get hot, huh? And the Kevlar gloves, actually, the Kevlar, Kevlar, however you want to call them, again, look at the ripstop material, loving that. Okay, again, though, you're going to be wearing something that is like flame retardant, huh? But if you don't want to wear it, I'm telling you, you can definitely switch into your Oakley Pilots. I have no problem with that. Either one you go with, I'm going to go ahead and stay with the Kevlar. Uh, put those in the 1.5 neutral, would you? Uno. Was that? Uno Cinco? Si, si. All right. So 1.5. Again, though, Oakley Pilots. If you want to roll high speed, you know. But if you want to roll true, if you want to roll true... Go ahead and throw those. Uh, you can you can throw the fingerless on if you want. However, when shit gets hot and you're picking up brass, it's all up in your boat. You ain't gonna be wearing Oakley Pilots. All I'm saying, you probably won't be wearing fingerless. So, with that being said, let's go ahead put our K gloves on in the one five neutral. Huh. Backpacks, Alice sacks, ruck sacks. We're not gonna we're not gonna be rucking at all. All right. We don't even want to get out of our fucking boat, huh? We're going to be extracting the the operatives like us from dangerous situations. If we have to get out of the boat, we have two men assigned to that. Huh? We have two SWIC operators that their primary mission is to roll out and freaking 
retrieve basically wounded guys. A lot of times, I know a lot of you guys I didn't mention in the history, you might even have like one of those uh one of those sarks on board. Huh? If you haven't seen that video, it should be coming up now. You need to check out them freaking pipe hitters. So anyway, we're gonna put it in the camel back 1333, cause it looks sweet, and that's how we roll. Patches, come on, boys. Let's roll. There it is. So, let's fucking go. This is the Swick build that I came up with. I think it's true, especially to the history we just watched. And, let's face it. Me, myself, I'm probably prejudiced. Only because when I joined uh, voluntarily... Uh, we were in the BD Woodland, huh? And I just think, I really think that's a sweet-ass fit. And let's let's not forget that anytime you want that little medic badge, all you got to do is make sure that you have an LMG as your primary. Now, with that being said, what we're doing today, as I stated, we're going to freaking jam them up with lead coming out of our boat. If you dare... Come within 100 meters of our boat, as the history said. We got enough firepower to chop motherfucking 8-inch trees down, huh? So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into our primary here. Which, I'm going to go, obviously, with the MK48. Why wouldn't we? So, let's go ahead. Paint presets. We're going to go ahead and throw it in the black again. If you want gold weapons and shit, you need to just, uh, you need to, to goddamn DD down to someone's channel that doesn't keep it legit. Huh? Stock, stock, bud stock in the black scope. Now today we're going to go with the holo. Now I'm not hating you if you want to go with the panoramic. Because huh? I am I love the panoramic site myself. Only because of the peripheral vision. If you follow me you understand that when you scope in you still have your peripheral right. With the, I don't know man. With the holo it's just, I ain't me, me. But I'm going to go ahead and equip it. You know why? Because they don't give us our fucking ACOG. And we're going to go ahead and put that in the T2 Gray. Trigger. Hey, come on. They don't call an LMG for nothing. Full auto only. Magazine, of course, extended 200 so we can get some lead down range. And give motherfuckers that are fucking with us again. Look at the history. Remember the history. Fuck you. Huh? Fuck you. So we're going to put that in the one to black. Undergrip. Now I know what you're thinking. Man, we're going to the Victor Ford. Man, you're always up and down. The reason is, if we're on board the boat and we're throwing down grazing fire for our boys to get back to the boat for extraction, then why wouldn't we go with the foregrip V4? It gives us actually, you know, accuracy, handling. It gives us everything we need not to necessarily spray and pray but if we had to it'll work right so go ahead equip it for grip victor four in the uno dos nega c all right let's go Bam. now i know what you're thinking man come on matrix let's put on a laser well all i'm gonna say to that is come on ub Give us a laser that we can turn on and off. I've been preaching that for years. And while we're at it, why couldn't I equip an ACOG on my LMG? Huh. Just saying. Put that in the no deuce. Freaking nigga. See. Barrel. I know, man. Standard long. Standard long. Long standard. What are we going with, Matrix? What are we going with here? Of course. Go ahead and drop and smoke yourself. We're going with the long. Because we are tearing trees up. And with a longer barrel means what? We have more velocity of said bullet coming out of the pipe. Huh? So that's more that's more velocity to just go ahead, chop down them them cottontails, uh, you know, just the slender trees that grow near a riverbank. We will just shred those and hopefully get some tangos while we're at it. So, go ahead and equip that bad boy in the long barrel. Put that in the dos dos gris. Okay. Muzzle. I mean, come on, boys. Compensator Victor 2, of course. But I'm not hating you. If you want to put the stock muzzle on, only, I repeat, only if you don't have the Victor 2 unlocked. Huh? 
So that's the option. Go ahead. Unlock the fucking Victor 2 cupcake. One, two, black. Let's go. Uno, dos, negro. Let's go. <laughs> and that, my friends, is going to be what saves a lot of our friends' lives. Uh, I'm not sure how many boats in Wildlands actually have, like, I know none of them have the minigun, at least I don't think, firing the 7.62. But either way, who gives a fuck, right? Because we're doing our thing as Swick, right? And this right here, you can't go wrong with it. We're going to be putting down cover and grazing fire, and we will survive. Huh? Huh. All right. Secondary, let's go with it. MK249. You're, I already know. Matrix, this is so fucking fictional. All right, man. First off, I'm going to go ahead and drink me some more Mountain Dew here. Okay, first off, it's not so damn fictitional if you think about it. Go through my history, go through my builds, and you guys will see that this is one compact, reminds me of the fucking Parasol, to the day I die. It will. No one will change my mind in the comments. So you can comment all you want. The Matrix is fucked up. He's never been in the middle. Of the I don't give a fuck. Because this is what Karen is a secondary. Huh? Let's go ahead and open it up with parts. And might I add, if we got to unass our boat and go retrieve one of our brothers, what else would you want, honestly? I mean, Swick and their Sakars are nothing but a fucking platform of weaponry, huh? So, okay, let's go. Stock, bud, stock, uno, dos. Scope panoramic, okay? Because I, I look at it this way. I love the panoramic sight, huh? Okay? I love it. And they don't give us an ACOG, but even if they did, I would still equip the panoramic as far as running and gunning because it is what's up in this game. Huh? Even if I had an ACOG, I would equip the panoramic on this my running and gunning, basically get a buddy up. He will live. This is the site we're going with in the dust dos. Obviously, LMG. Oh, sorry about that. Uno, uno. Now, I just wish, I just wish that, that we could put an extension on here. However, we can't, and I'm down with that. One, two, black. Ooh, Matrix, you're not going with the Victor 4. Why is that, Matrix? Why is that? Because we're going to be freaking running and gunning, huh? We're going to go with the Victor 3, and you're going to put that in the 1-2 black. All right, rail, again. I'm going to go ahead and put a laser sight on it, even though we can't, like, turn it off. And I'm not quite sure how it works with AI and everything like that, if they can actually see your lasers and all that. But I would imagine in PvP, if you couldn't turn off your laser, people could track you to your barrels. All I'm fucking saying. Come on, Wildlands. Get get with the fucking program and give us an ACOG for a fucking LMJ. Huh. So, I'm going to give it, leave it up to you guys. You can either put in the rail cover or... The laser sight, I wouldn't use the three dot, but go ahead and throw the laser sight on and put that in the T2 gray. Barrel, again, running and gunning, running and gunning. We're out to get a buddy that's down. I need suppressive fire on me now. We're on foot. We're not in our boat. Huh? So we're going to stand a barrel for nothing more, for nothing more than ease of movement. Huh? Mobility. Huh? So put that in the standard. Uno dos nega. Muzzle. Come on, guys. I, I can't say it enough. We're not... They already know we're there. We got a buddy down on the fucking ground. Huh? And we got to jump our happy ass out of the boat and leave all that firepower. I am not going with a, with a compensator. I'm not going with anything but the compensator Victor 2 because... Let me remind you guys how much more action and handling you get. Now, obviously, if you don't have this open, you do what you got to do. Huh? But this is my Swick build, huh? MK249, and I'll do what I want with it. Huh? Huh. <laughs> you fuckers. All right. Compensator Victor 2. Dust, dust, gray. All right. There it is. So I'm just saying, when the deed's got to get done, when your buddy's down, if I'm down, this is what I want y'all to come get me with, right? Because you get two guys firing this with one guy on the assist, 
look this is the real this is the true deal i've said it before this is the true deal we're gonna we're gonna role play like this is the parasol let's fucking go handguns today we're going with the m9 now i was actually gonna give you guys the choice of an smg 11 or the smg 11 dragon but come on boys come on boys they ain't gonna be packing that on a swick boat Let's fucking go. That's all I'm saying. Let's fucking go. Right? I mean, ain't nobody carrying that fucking bullshit. That happy horse bullshit. At least I don't think so anyway. So, let's get on with the good old M9. The good old M9, as much as I carry this, the more I like it. Right? I mean, look at those Dago sights. Look at those Trichons, man. That's pretty fucking beast, right? So, paint presets. Of course, black parts go ahead magazine go ahead just equip the 15 don't be a tart ass and equip the 25 unless you really feel like you're gonna need it and if you really feel like you need 10 more fucking rounds when you've got two lmgs on your fucking back i don't know boy maybe you need to go be a cook yeah just a cook just saying okay makes sense makes sense to fucking me and guess what this is my build Let's fucking go. Put that in the standard 15. Uno dos negro. Ugh. Rail. Keep it clean. Rail cover. Go ahead and throw that in the dos dos gray. Barrel. Standard barrel today. Yep. In the gray. Don't forget to equip it in the gray. Stock muzzle, of course, in the black. Go ahead. You know, we're going to have a suppressor somewhere, I guess. Maybe our cargo pocket. Or maybe, maybe stuff down in our fucking uh, boot, you know? Maybe, maybe that's what we'll carry our suppressor anyways. Go ahead, stock muzzle, one, two. Let's fucking roll. Tell you, man, that Beretta, it ain't no bitch, man. All I'm saying, that's what they carry. So, again, you want the golden guns and all that bullshit, go to somebody else's channel, man. I don't play that shit here. And neither do my fucking operators. Let's fucking go. Now, we'll, we'll delve into this matrix. What about a 227 instead of the... Okay, here's the deal, man. We could. And I I will be honest with you. The fucking SIG, bro, is one of the best weapons on planet Earth, right? Huh? The SIG 227. That's that's what you were asking me about. Now I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you here. To my knowledge, <clears throat> to my knowledge, and uh correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but sweet carries the standard issue, which is a Beretta, which is an M9, huh? So that's as I was actually thinking then that I wanted to go with the 227, huh? Or variant thereof. But again, as stated, I just feel like my builds are true. They're fucking true. Alright? I keep them as true to IRL as I can. So with that being said, that is exactly why we're going with the fucking M9. Now, if I don't know something about Swick, because again, you know, I wasn't Swick, right? Huh? I know some what of Swick. I have one buddy that was a Swick in the military, but it wasn't available for this fucking video. To my knowledge, the M9 is the standard issue of the United States Navy. Okay? I wish that they would go to the 227. But again, contracts are contracts, budgets are budgets, for good or bad. That is why, my friend, we're going with the Beretta M9. <sighs> All right, cool. So getting back to what I was tracking on, uh, drone medic. Uh, here we go again, standby. Fuck! I hate not having a left bumper. <sighs> All right. So here we go. That is why we carry... The M9. Now, I would suggest, as stated, everybody carries a medic. Of course, everybody carries a frag grenade. I would double up on them. I wanted to unlock the flash grenade. I think I have enough points. However, I just hadn't got around to it, to be 100% honest with you. The flare gun, they don't work. So, again, as I state, as I role play, bro, you cannot carry every fucking thing down here or you're just a piece of shit type of guy that's not trying to stay true, true to real life, huh? So, frag grenade, 
flare gun because they don't work work a fuck anyway. Diversion lures actually work a little better than the flare guns in this game. And perhaps I'm going to open the flash grenade in my 100th video. Fucking who. All right. So there it is. There it is. That is... That is your Swick build from Matrix Native. I mean, we look like some fucking pipe hitters. Uh, what sucks, though, I must admit, what sucks is that we have no aft or left or right guns, right? Um, that really pisses me off. We don't even, I don't know, it's just sort of gay. So, that's why we are heavy into... The MK249. So let's go dismount. Okay. All I'm trying to say here. I ain't keeping shit down. So you know what to do. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure you snipe like, snipe sub, my peeps. I hope you had an amazing day today. I hope yesterday was amazing. I hope tomorrow is amazing in front of you. I hope everybody in my stream today. Has a dick swinging day tomorrow. Let's fucking go. Cause my peeps. Check. Operator 41, I'll see you next video. I missed you peeps. Love you. Love you fam. Cause that's how we roll. All land, sir. We're fucking good. What's the play, boss? MK248. That's the play. Okay, why am I not reloading? Let's fucking go. Have a pipe swinger day tomorrow, boys. Talk to you next video. And this is exactly why. We're carrying the fucking parasol right here. Cause we ain't putting up with the shit. Dreaming big, town is small, and it's going down. All I need is a microphone, I'm headed for the ground. Yo, call go. me whack, call me weak, say I'll never blow. Memphis bleak, they know like the radio that Henderson was meant to speak. I'm on these tracks, just like Thomas, I'm the truth, just being honest. Y'all a bunch of Martin and Anthony's, yeah, that's prima donnas. Wayne Brady, they know the deal. Henderson just showing skill. Way that I just go at will, you can call me Uncle Phil. You working, but I work harder to the day. I'm Mr. Carter, my 